My name is Stephanie Mohan, and I'm a portrait and protest photographer, and I have a studio here in Fairfax. And I came up with the idea to have this club when I applied for the position of artist in resident. And it took me, it took a pandemic and learning how to Zoom to actually make this club a reality. And the coolest part is we're coming up on a year. <laughs> Yeah, um, the club started a year ago, February, mm -hmm. with Donald Kinney as our original speaker. Yeah. I think that's yep. cool. <laughs> um, I want to summarize our year. Uh, we've been, we began this club, since we began this club, we've not only enjoyed getting together for nearly a year, but we've had several field, field trips, some great speakers, including a Pulitzer Prize winner, a photographer from New York, and many of you, too, have spoken. Uh, most recently, we've had 18 photographers join together as a group, and we created a hugely successful show right here in Fairfax. <laughs> um, as you all know, our club's open to everybody, all levels, and I will say every single month I learned something new from one of our speakers, and I hope it's been helpful to all of you as well. Mm -hmm. Go to the next slide. We also have a very... Oh, one of the goals of this club is to help bring photographers together, share ideas and learn from each other and see what other amazing photographers are doing. We also have a very active Facebook group, as you all know. We have only a few rules. You can post up to twice a day and there can be two albums or it can just be two posts, but just, just two, that's all you're allowed. And each month we have a photo challenge that will hopefully get you out shooting more. And to find our Facebook page, search for the Fairfax Photo Club. And I think you all know that. <laughs> uh, lastly, it's my goal to get a wide variety of speakers and I'm constantly searching for unique photographers. So if you are interested in speaking, let me know. We are booked through April. And next month, Mary Serpos, I'm sure some of you know her. She's a very creative and unique photographer. I have a flyer, let's see shirking on my responsibilities here. There she is. Um, and then in March, we have a very cool guy speaking. His name is Jeff Lewis. He is not only a amazing landscape photographer, he shoots giant, he makes giant prints and they're incredibly sharp and amazing. But he's also a meteor meteorologist and he runs a weather service for landscape photographers. So I think he's gonna be really interesting. I, I'm excited to have him come. And he he can talk, you think I can talk? He can talk. <laughs> he, he's a million miles a minute, he's amazing. Um, <laughs> so um, I feel silly saying this, but um, I'd like to introduce, Donald and where wait they hold on. I have to uh, get out of the share screen. There we go. I would love for Donald and uh, Terry to speak a little bit about two things about field trips and about what's going on with uh, the robberies, because I know both of you are are pretty mm. out aware of what's happening. So I thought it would be good to talk about that. Well, I'll start with the robberies. Um, I don't know how much of all of you are aware of the armed robberies against several photographers in San Francisco, um, including one of our own at Pro Bono Photography, who was robbed uh, at gunpoint half a block away from the um, police station, the central police station in San Francisco. Um, and so we have a, a, another group that has been put together um, looking to encourage the police to do more about this. It has gotten to the point where they, these thugs, and, and maybe it's the same group that are stealing all the bicycles in Marin, I don't know, but they, they are following photographers after protests and after uh, various venue shoots in the city, you know, at, 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 no, at the locations that are pretty normal that you would go shoot at night or whatever. And uh, basically sticking a gun in somebody's face and basically stealing their gear. Um, mm -hmm. And they, there was a recent one where a destination photographer from, from Dallas at the Palace of Fine Arts was robbed uh, or attempted to rob. Now he fought them off. Not not a good idea to fight them off. I mean, they, because these guys had guns and 
you know, even if they don't shoot you, they're going to hit you in the head with a gun. And, you know, you don't just fall down and get up like on TV. So um, anyway, it's a serious matter. And so we have come up with a variety of rules. Uh, Steffi and I can share them, not rules, but guidance, I should say, on things to do to stay safe. And, and when um, one of the key ones is try not to look like a photographer. That's not easy to do if you're carrying around a lot of heavy, heavy gear, but, um, but it's where you park you know, and being aware, working with a buddy system and things like that. So maybe Stephanie could post some of these guidance. Um, I, I can get them over to her and um, it would be helpful for people to, to just be aware, particularly if you're photographing in the city. But there's also been cases where um, people have followed people home, you know, and there's been cases where, and again, I compare it to the bicycles because they're doing the same thing with these bike, these fancy bicycles. And following people home and then coming back late in the middle of the night and stealing all their garages. So um, there are a lot of people, I guess they've given up on the idea of stealing cell phones and figured there's a lot more money in cameras and bicycles. So, yeah. Anyway, that's what's going on. Um, Don, I'll turn it over to you. You can start the talk on. Uh, yeah. Uh, I had a friend uh, yesterday got uh, robbed down on the San Mateo coast at one of the beaches and uh, he just got bowled over and somebody took off with his gear and tripod and everything. And, the only person there on the beach and uh the robber got away and luckily he wasn't injured too badly so but it's a uh very frightening thing for him to you know it's going to affect the way he continues doing his photography so uh, i posted on the uh, group page his story so if anyone wants to take a look at it it's thank you very right. sobering yeah I didn't know he was injured. What happened? No, he was he was not injured badly. So yeah, thank God he could have been killed, you know. But it stays with you because my friend Leon, um, you know, it, it it was hard. He didn't get back out into the field for at least another month. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, he's back out, but he's very cautious. So yeah. as we all are right now. Group I'd like to make a recommendation. And that is that a press release of some kind be prepared and sent to every photo website, Petapixel, North American Nature Photographers, uh, professional photographers, everything. Just everybody has to be made aware, yeah. especially women. And I'll post this tomorrow to women in wildlife photography. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not just San Francisco. Yeah, and well, uh, the guy from Petapixel was on our one of our meetings. Um, cool. So we're going to write an article on this. He was looking for more people that have been accosted, you know, um, because he wanted to be able to drop more names and stuff like that. There's a lot of talk, but not everybody's putting their names out there, you know, or want to be interviewed. He just wants to sure. interview them. Mm -hmm. So sure. uh, anytime you know something, if you get it over to me, I'll get it over to to Leon, who's running this group. And um, you can get over the guy at Pet Epistle. So, cool. you know, it seems like it would be so easy for the police to just set these guys up, you know, just. Yeah. I, I don't, I just don't think the police have considered it to be such a high priority. Yeah. You know? Until someone gets property crime. Yeah. No, no, That's, no. yeah. So, get killed. Yeah. Hmm. It's high profile people who have to. That's right. People who have swing a lot of weight in San Francisco who can get any kind of time budget out of the cops. It's really on the people. It's really on us and the mainstream media. Um, the Women of Wildlife group, uh, we advise each other uh, how to protect ourselves because these are we're women who go out in the woods, uh, which is not the same as the city, but I mean, predation on females is still a big thing. And, uh, you know, you got to know self defense, you got to have a, a, a siren, you got to have bear spray, but basically, you got to have the up here to use it. And that's not actually who we are. And yeah. so it's it's on us to 
incorporate that somehow. I think. Well, that, that's that's the right spirit is getting everybody involved. And so I know that uh, quite a few groups have gotten uh, and we've engaged San Francisco street photographers, uh, photo walks, carnival photographers. Um, you know, they, they just all need to be aware of how vulnerable it is. Um, so it's it's good to have it in this discussion as well. Also, the the uh, the other Marin Photo Club is fully aware they've had some robberies over there as well. Um, it's just not, you know, I, I mean, I've been photographing the city for years and I, I just, I don't do night photography anymore. I mean, I, you know, I just don't want to take the risk. It's, it's not even the gear, you know, the gear is insured. The issue is these thugs, they'll hit you in the head, they'll shoot you, they'll knife you. You know what I mean? Um, that, that's not the way I want to go. All right, we should turn this over to a more positive note. <laughs> yes. All right, talk about field trips. <laughs> safe ones. No. <laughs> yes, safe ones. Well, well, Sandy had a good idea about uh, Point Ray Station. And uh, I think that's a dynamite idea. There's all kinds of stuff out there. Marty Knapp Studio and um, yeah, Ter Terry knows Marty real well. That would be fun to start there and maybe check out their work, his work. Yeah. And, you there's, know, and then go off. There's an old barn out there worth exploring out in the field. And uh, Toby's Feed Barn has, usually has a good exhibit going. And there's a very photogenic town, I think. So. And I saw Sandy mentioned perhaps having Carlos meet us there. I would. Yeah. Uh, Carlos has, has COVID. He and Rebecca have COVID. They're oh, down right. sick right now. Ah, terrible. Wait a while on that. I, I just want to remind you to put Carlos Parada on the list of who we should have as speakers. Oh yeah. Stephanie. And um and you know when I when I said that he could meet us there. I think that he would be better. He goes out into, he doesn't stay in Point Reyes Station. Right. He goes out to what he calls church. And um, I don't know if he would want us to go with him there. And he just lies down in the wilderness and waits until the wildlife trusts him and starts taking photos of him. But uh, he, I've, he spoke at the San Geronimo um, Community Center and as an artist, and um, he was fantastic. And I, I definitely want him to be one of the speakers here. Have you invited yeah. him? Did you ask him if he was interested? I did not. But, um, if but you I want to ask him, then I'll, after, if he's interested, I, I'll give him a call. Okay. Just keep well, in mind, you and Rebecca are down with COVID right now. Give it a little time. Well, hopefully, well, no, we're booked through April, so you know we it would be cool. Would what be. about Miguel Parias? He didn't have a very. Uh, he didn't. It doesn't look that, like he's updating a lot, so I'm. I'm not sure. I just, you know, I. He's such a sweet guy. I. I would be open to it, but. Um, I'm open. I mean, we. It's not. It's fine. Well, it might. It might inspire him to create too. Good point. Um, Donald has a friend. I think in April, right? That's going to be. <laughs> uh, yes, Jan Bell, who is uh, my uh, mentor uh, and a fabulous photographer, award-winning. He has a book out now, which is a story in itself. But yeah, he's a lands landscape photographer. He does workshops on Lake Superior. And, uh, all around nice guy. He comes he's out down for April, right? Yes, yes, he sure is. He's looking That's forward great. to it. So now we're up to May. It's great. What about Marty now? Good idea. I can talk to Marty. What I've been trying to do, just so you all know what, what's been kind of piquing my interest, is I've been trying to not have everybody be a white man. Nothing against <laughs> white men, but it's been like mm -hmm. 80% white mm -hmm. men so I've been trying to find women and people of color just to thank you different perspectives so 
that's my goal. You know, <laughs> I, and I, and it's kind of creepy the way I stalk people on Instagram. I found a guy who I just thought was amazing and I've written to him twice and he still hasn't replied. I, I said, I love your work and kind of warmed him up. And then I asked and I, and I did tell him we have a zero budget and I haven't heard back. So <laughs> I'm really hoping he, he, you know, like that was what I loved so much about Bob Carey. And I'm just trying to let you all know what kind of what I'm looking for. I so saw that it's not just landscape and not just um, street. I just want to try to get a big variety as much as we can, you know, as much as possible. So we have a woman next month, which I'm super psyched about. Oh, great. I can, I can ask a, a friend of mine who's down in um, La Jolla. If he's interested, he's an amazing photographer. And uh, has done it for professionally worked with I think or with Zinstein and other artists in New York but Sounds he's not great. yeah so, I'll, so I'll ask you web, why don't you send me the website okay That'd be fun. okay I could show you a picture I you just sent Here. me hold on beautiful <laughs> Yeah, he's an he's an incredible artist. All right. We all, also might want to talk with Suze Lipman down in uh, Mill Valley. She's been getting a lot of shows, but what she does that I find so sweet is uh, San Francisco street people, street scenes. Um, should check her out. If, if you if you have somebody that you think might be interested, send me their their website. And again, I'm just trying to mix it up so that it's not like all landscape in a row. I'm trying to just get a, as big a variety as I can. Um, I think Mary is going to be very a very good a good uh, unique vision. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think you all will like her. I would love to hear from Mary. And Jeff, the Jeff's a character, and um, he's really good too. And he's pure landscape. So, and then we have Jan Bell. Who? What? What does Jan Bell specialize in? Uh, he, landscape uh, photography. He's very design oriented. He's a graphic artist, and that sort of translates to his work. So, he's... two two landscapes in a row. So we'll we won't have any more for a couple months. But yeah. um, all right, great. Yeah, just send me emails on our websites. I'd love to look. Will do. All right, let's go forward. It's going to be a short one tonight, guys. Um, should I tell you the, um, I'll go out of order and I'll tell you our, um, I'm running out of words today. I'll tell you our challenge. Oh, okay. Uh, let's do weather, <laughs> rain, get out your gear, get out your umbrellas, get out your rubbers or whatever you call them, <laughs> your rubber band. And, um, <laughs> my husband's laughing. <laughs> I got some. <laughs> is this All for right. February or just the rest of January? This is for January. Or this is for until our next meeting. Until the next meeting, right? Until our next meeting, yeah. Yeah, I I love All that. Right. Photo. I love your photograph there. The guy with the umbrella. That is that yeah. uh, Sean? No, it was some guy walking down the pathway at Target. You know the Target pathway. Yes, yes. And I I was bummed. I didn't have my real camera, and I had yeah. my cell phone. But yeah. the good thing about having my cell phone is he was just five feet away from me and as he walked hmm. by he couldn't hear me shooting so I think he would have been pissed off he didn't have a real yeah. friendly vibe so yeah. I probably wouldn't have got it had I had a real camera but well you changed you changed the umbrella to orange it was red wasn't it originally or I blame Lightroom I I just uh -oh. downloaded the app and so I've been okay. uh, kind of getting goofy with it <laughs> cool all right so now let's Let's see, I'm going to open this back up. <clears throat> Bear with me. I'm being very slow today. Here we go. So let's talk about our images. 
and Alina's not here. Bonnie's not here. Carolyn's not here. Diane's not here. Donald, you're first. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I thought you were going to start with Martha. Oh, Martha, Martha you yeah. want to start? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's getting kind of late for me. I thank yeah, you. I totally get it. Okay, could we start with let, could we start with the little otter first? Yeah, that baby. Oh. Okay. Uh, I took this. This is a. Sorry, hang on for one sec. I want to make this bigger. Is this a good size for everybody? Yeah. 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 It's good. Yeah. Okay. Go for okay. it. <laughs> This is a, an endangered uh, sea otter, a juvenile. Took it uh, in, on July 16th in Morro Bay. Um, technicalities first. Uh, I shot it with a Sony A9 with a 7300 lens on it, full extension to 300. Uh, I had some light, as you can see. I shot it at F18. At 1 200th, the ISO was 640 and the EV was set to zero. Um, my practice is to plan my photos in every possible detail uh, before I go out. Uh, I mean, I have a calendar which it, I've shared with George in which I record the breeding seasons and the appearance times of plants and animals and the times of day and the, the tides and all of that. I use an app called Photo Pills that I recommend because you can set it to tell you anywhere on the planet, uh, when's the blue light, when's the golden light, moonrise, moonsets, et cetera. So with all of this in mind, uh, Jim and I were in Paso Robles for a wedding. I wanted to go over to Morro Bay to look for the sea otters. Before we left, I'd done the research. Uh, I knew there'd be pups in the bay in July. So the first day we go down to scope the scene. It's sunny, good light, it's cool, not much wind. And the great planner had the wrong lens on her camera. So uh, they were far enough out that I just couldn't get a good shot. And so the next day, uh, another good low tide in the morning. We went out a little later to get the right tide. Uh, and this time I had the, the right lens, the, the 7300. And um, there's a sidewalk that goes along the bay and above the bay. And Bingo, there it was. Um, a pair of sea otter pups. They spend five hours of every day sleeping. And this one had just rolled over to give this prayer position. And I was squatted behind a hedge and I had the, the lens through the hedge. Yeah. And there it is. Yes, Donald? You're muted. I'm sorry, I was just making noise there. I'll mute oh. I'm sorry. Okay. I wanted to be as close to eye level as I could get, which isn't much because I was like 25 feet above the water at low tide. But there it is. So do the planning and expect that nature will give you a surprise. And she did. What time of day did you say you shot this? 10.56 uh, a.m. Any questions? Okay, let's go to the other one. Okay. Sometimes the light's all shining on me. By the way, both of these have won us little awards, so that's nice. So the technicals, um, I took this June 3, 2019 at 9.27 a.m. with the Sony A9. I had uh, just a 70 lens on it. Technicals if you want them. So blah, blah, blah on the planning. This shot was just a stone accident. 
Uh, George and I were driving up the Bofax Road for one of our weekly rambles. And uh, I packed this one lens, the 2870 for Vistas. And we were gonna do a hike from Rock Springs to the High Marsh Trail to the Azalea Meadow and back, which we did. And so we get up to the top of the Bofax and we turn left on Wedge, West Ridgecrest and George is driving. And then the sun breaks through the fog, stop the car. <laughs> and, and we just got out and there we were in this cathedral of trees with the incense of the petrichor and uh, there we were wandering around the glory drunk on grace that was a good day george that was a great memorable day it was and we did do high marsh and azalea and i've got those shots too <laughs> Questions to anybody? That's a beautiful shot. Absolutely beautiful. I love the light. I know where that is. So I, I, you know, I know exactly what you're feeling. Yeah. Junkard Stone Dawn Grace. <clears throat> Martha? Yes. All right. Well, let's move on. We now will have Donald. Oh, okay. Well, these are two photographs. Um, and thank you, by the way, uh, Stephanie, for the use of your studio for our show. It was very generous of you doing that for us. And we all had a good time. And I know, you know, really, it's really appreciate it. We had a good turnout and we had even dogs came, you know, so that made no cats. I didn't see any cats, but that's OK. Anyway, uh, this is from my first gallery, gallery one man show. Uh, Mill, Mill Valley Library invited me to show my photographs at one of those first Friday things. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a whole bunch of photographs to show. And it's a fairly confined space, but I wanted to show as many photographs as, as I could. So I came up with the idea of putting two photographs in one frame. That way I could show twice as many photographs. But I learned that for a show, you want to space your, your frames out. Give them some breathing room. So I packed everything real tightly together. And so I learned my lesson. So in subsequent shows, I've spread things out appropriately so people have a little bit of space between frames to rest their eyes. But these two, and I also, uh, this taught me what a diptych is. Um, I didn't know two photographs together or three photographs together from a triptych. I had no idea what that was, so. And theoretically, a diptych is supposed to, one of the photographs is, or images is supposed to feed off the other or contribute to the story or, you know, somehow contribute to the other one. And this probably, they, they're similar subjects, but they don't really help each other. They're just similar, you know, they're both water and both patterns, but that's about all they have in common. So that's another lesson I learned. This photography is a continual learning journey i think uh, everybody can agree we continually learn these things so that's what i learned about this you can see my self-portrait in the bubbles and that was in shade you, if you're taking pictures of bubbles at the beach you have to be fast you have to get in there real quickly and before they all pop you know so stand right over them with maybe a zoom lens i think i was using here i don't know what the f14 or something or other the bottom one is ripples on Alpine Dam, the Alpine Lake. Uh, probably on a gray day, it, the wind whips up a little bit and makes these thumbprint kind of um, ripples that I really like. Very abstract, but 
<clears throat> two black and white. Well, actually, the top is color. There's color in the top one, but more or less monochromatic shots of water. I like water. So that's uh, my two. Thank you very much. Thank you. I like oh, the little peace signs and all the that's water that's drops. That's what I see. That's what I see. <laughs> yeah, that's what I saw too. I, my legs spread out on both sides of the puddle. But as I said, you have to be quick to get out there before they all pop. Sorry, I forget that I'm on sharing. <laughs> Thank you. Are you ready, Mr. George? I am. All right. So when the time came to uh, to pick the two pictures, I said, well, I want to show two things that are different and that show different sides of, of what I've been doing. And I would say that uh, unlike <laughs> what Martha described, I'm not, while I'm a, am a planner in my professional life, I'm not much of a planner around my photography. I'm more of an opportunistic person. I see it and I go, oh, there's something that's, you know, I think it's gonna really wants to be photographed. And so I do it. So here, this picture, the story with this is, I had gone to uh, San Francisco on my bicycle for an event that was in the early evening. And I was returning <clears throat> later in the evening um, via the bridge again on my bike. And it's at the time of day when you can ride your bicycle on the west sidewalk on the bridge um, during the middle of the day and on in the weeks during the week, you have to go on the east side. but. This was a this was a West Side ride. This was October twenty seventh of last year, and it was just just before eight o'clock in the evening, as I was returning back to where I had parked my car, which was at the foot of the bridge in the Cavallo Point area, and this just stopped me in my tracks. This this view of of the bridge like that, so I pulled the bike over, got my iPhone out because this is an iPhone photo. Um, picked the phone out as I think I can't remember which what uh, aspect setting I used on this, but uh, I did. I used it's an iPhone 13. It's got the three cameras. I used the the extra wide angle camera, so which is equivalent to a 13 millimeter. That's that's what produced this picture, and it. <laughs> technicals which i didn't set of course because it's iphone it's, um it's sent pretty much automatic but it's it it shot iso 800 um f 1.8 and a ninth of a second whoa yeah and, uh, so that's handheld looking you know up just as you would if you were standing at the foot of the bridge and it is those uh Bridge sections are, they really are each one. It's just a colossus. It's something really impressive to see. And at night, it's extra special. And I thought the lighting was fantastic, the colors. So I, I was really happy with that um, as something that, like I said, cycling around and it just got me. So let's move to the next one. Okay, this is the uh, the weasel. And um, Martha had one where we were out together, and I also have one where we were out together. Yeah. This is at Abbott's Lagoon. And here we were, let's see, I'm going to go to that one. Yeah, get my, my technical details out. Okay, this was in April 19th of 2021. We had hiked out to the lagoon, out to the beach, and we were returning. I, as we're returning, I noticed a hole and a little bit of something moving in the hole um, next to the next to the trail, almost back to the trailhead. And uh, I kind of said, "Okay, let's stop and just watch." I got I had my camera out. The first motion, the first sight when he he did pop his head out, I, I was not ready. 
Uh, so I just basically got the camera out, uh, opened up the zoom on it to uh, to maximum, train, trained it on the the opening of the hole and hoped that he would show his head again. And indeed he did and click, click, click. And there it was. So this is was taken with my Nikon D3500, which when I'm out on an expedition like this, it's generally is set to the, the, the sport setting that they have, which sort of optimizes for um, moving people or animals. Um, which means that it's going to be uh, short uh, shutter speed. So in fact, this was ISO 400, fully extended as a 70 to 300 millimeter lens that uh, at full extension, it's f6.3. Uh, and it's a crop sensor. So it's sort of, uh, I guess, 450 millimeters in that sense, and it's a thousandth of a second. So that is the long tail weasel, and I cherish that picture because that makes me think of the place and what I was doing. And I also just think he's a real cutie. So I carry I carry the Nikon with me on my bicycle. I carry it when I'm out hiking, and here is. If we can switch back to just show me to switch out of camera, or out of screen sharing for a moment, I just have a couple of things I wanted to show, or maybe I'll just show it in the, the gallery view. <laughs> so here is my camera bag. It's just a, an REI backpack and the, the camera goes into the bag. And whenever I get to a place where I'm gonna take pictures, it comes out and goes around my neck. So that's uh, <laughs> that's my story. And I think that's, I've probably taken my full time there. Um, hey, Peg, I have a question for you. Um, you had the protest photo, right? And you're muted. Um, you're muted, Peg. Because I'm just realizing I have landscapes for you, but I think you showed protest photos. Oh, I did. I changed those. Yeah. I was just realizing as I was looking at the list that I do you want to just talk about the photos that you do have up here, or do you want to send them uh, to somebody else? Yeah. Go ahead and email me and we'll go to somebody else. Okay. And then let's see. So next would be is Joanne here? Joanne is not here. Mallory, you're up. And Mallory, I'm sorry because you didn't send me a JPEG. This is, I took a screenshot. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> and you're, oh, you're not, I'm not sharing screen. And you're muted, Mallory. Yeah, I thought we were going to just do older, you know, pictures that we've had, but um, that, that's fine. Whatever works. Is it big um, enough? Can you all see it? I can see it. I can see it. You can make it. You can. T you can. You can uh, squeeze it bigger, or whatever the opposite of squeeze is. Well, because it's a screenshot, it's not allowing me to. So oh, I can. I can on my iPad. So I. You can, I all, can. you can all make your. Um, you can all increase the size of your, if you need to yeah. increase the size of your. So, um, that was a. Uh, I think it was it was a film uh photo i i don't do anything really just i uh let me see um i have no it, i'm going to look at your thing how you, how you got the shot so how i get shots is i kind of walk and i don't i'm not looking for shots but i get a little kind of tap on my shoulder or things get very quiet and i know that that's a shot and uh, when I get lucky, which is a lot of the time, I don't, I don't know actually whether I shot this, this one I know is film, but I use my phone, I use a point and shoot, I use a Canon, and, and I really can't tell the difference between any of them when I, if I'm doing a show or anything, I just, I don't know which one I used. 
and I don't care. I just uh, care for the for the image. Um, and usually it's just something, something, it's almost like a physical thing. I, things get quiet or, and it just like, there's my shot and I get pointed to the shot. Um, I have no idea what the, what any of the numbers are. I, it's just the shot. And um, uh, so this was taken in Paris. I think it, it was near the, um, what, what the hell is the center? I forgot the name of the center. But, um, and it was a reflection of, I just, I just got caught by the reflection of, um, of that was in a window of, of this particular uh, building. That's all, it was not a big deal. It was um, just another beautiful Paris place as they have so many of them. So that's all I have to say. Um, you do your own printing, right? Or you used to? Yeah, these these I printed, yeah. The, the, the two things that I'm gonna show, I, I printed in my basement. And that was in Fez, Morocco. And again, it was one of those moments where things got, it's sort of like a, a psychic tap on my shoulder. It was just, there it was. And uh, everything aligned and it was very easy. And um, that I, I think I, I, I don't know what I, I either did it with a Canon um, or I did it with uh, a point and shoot. I have no idea. Um, but I just, uh, the shot just, just absolutely caught me. And um, those are the ones that I know work when, when I get that, that moment of quiet and uh, I get caught. And then it, it just printed up. I, I, I hardly ever manipulate pictures. Um, and so this is just how it was. It was in, in Fez in Morocco at the, uh, it's a really, it's almost like a town, but it's, uh, I mean, I think it is a town within Fez uh, and it, it goes on forever and ever. And it's really easy to get lost in the Medina, which is the market. It's a great image. It it's is. beautiful. I like it, I Thank like you. it a lot. Miller, Thank that's beautiful. Thank you. Larry. It's like a Carter Bresson, you know. Yes. He's my favorite. He's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. Yeah, you're, mine you're, too. Certez and Bresson. Yeah. Um, yeah. You caught the moment. Yeah. It's, it it's was, always, for me, it's always the moment. I Anytime I try to plan something, it just sucks. It doesn't work. So I was just want to, Sorry. No, no, go ahead. There was some, when all the images were up on the walls, there was something about your images that really, you could just tell they were film. It, there was just something a little different about them that screamed black and white film to me. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, what's pretty amazing is like, I don't know if it's still happening, but all the digital pictures eventually fade. Film doesn't ever fade, you know, the, the film itself. So people are spending, I think, a lot of money to get these digital pictures that I don't know how long they're going to last. You know, so that's kind of interesting too. Right, I'm gonna thank, thank you. I'm going to quickly you. download the pegs. Just feel so bad that I didn't have them. I'm so sorry. I got to go, you guys. Love you. This is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bear with me. I just need a second. Sorry. I was sure somebody was going to get left out. Bye. Okay. <laughs> go. Peg, are you ready to go or you want me to go to the next person? Yeah, I could go. Okay. Oh. So wait, we're not going to see these two tonight. That'll be another night. Uh, where is Peg? <laughs> That's great. Hey, where are you? Who did, who did that one? one?
It's so funny. It's Raven. It's uh, there's one of them. Oh, one there of they are. There we are. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, I always go for the, I mean, my, my real passion is uh, photographs that tell stories and especially social justice related stories. So uh, this is at the uh, border wall in Nogales, Arizona. Um, mm -hmm. And my husband and I uh, went there a couple of years in a row for um, something called a border in Cuentro. And uh, it was pretty much a gathering of hundreds of people on both sides of the wall. And uh, there were panels, there was music. Just uh, to the right of the frame, there's a big stage that was set up on the Mexican side of the border. Uh, and there were bands playing and there's, you know, food, but it's really just, it's, it's about um, talking about um, the state of the border. And it's a three day weekend affair. So um, anyway, um, one thing I was, I, I was noticing when I was looking at closely at this image is how much things had changed from the first year that we went to when I took this the second year. And if you look real closely, you can see uh, between the the iron bars, there's a uh, a metal mesh. Uh, but the first year we were there, there was no metal mesh and people could hold hands across the border. And, you know, it was, uh, people really had, had a, a good time talking with each other through the border. And by this year, um, you could barely touch fingertips through the, through the wire. Um, and within a, about a month of the time this picture was taken, um, there were long lines of concertina, you know, razor wire, big coils that completely covered this. And uh, mm. where this post is that this somebody had drawn on this with uh, with chalk. Um, uh, basically, this this railing and this post were. Um, meant to keep people out of there. It was like a buffer zone, but everybody just sort of jumped over it. Uh, anyway, I just I just felt like uh, I, I love the I love the message of the photo and the graphic quality, and um, it just worked for me. It's um, used a Canon uh, camera with um, probably I think it was uh, with an eighteen uh, to one thirty five millimeter zoom. And that's about it. Any Did questions? Print it? I didn't. It was, yeah, it was, it's digital. Oh. Um, okay, right. so this is, uh, this photo was taken at 7.30 in the morning uh, in the San Francisco Financial District. Um, this was the very beginning of a uh, day-long activity. Um, mm -hmm. The women in the front here are with the, you know, red uh, ribbon skirts are um, Native American women with a group called Idol No More SF Bay. And uh, they were leading a very long march um, uh, down Montgomery Montgomery Street, and the purpose and what they were doing was blocking, uh, blocking, uh, leading a blockade of the road that was going to last the whole day. Uh, in order to, it was a climate a climate justice rally, and they were going to um, people in, uh, you know, environmental groups, indigenous groups, youth groups. Uh, we're going to be shutting down financial institutions on Montgomery Street that were financing the fossil fuel industry. And over the course of the day, uh, the two blocks that are that they were going to be blockading um, were painted with just a, a massive street mural 
um, that covered, you know, curb to curb for two long city blocks, and it was gorgeous. And it was uh, depicting um, uh, a future without, you know, a positive future for future generations. So anyway, that's what this is. It was amazing. And, I was there. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It was I think that may have been. Yeah. Yep. And um, yeah, I was just I was thinking about the process of taking a picture like this. And I'm sure Stephanie and Terry have have uh, have done this routine, but it's it's interesting trying to it, there's usually a handful of photographers and people filming at the beginning in front of these marches and it's a it's a real dance that happens as for the photographers sort of weave in and out um trying to leave space for each other not hog not get in front of everybody else's shot but it is a, a seriously amazing dance that happens and especially if like you have to plan a ways ahead uh for let's say with this shot i wanted to crouch down to get more of an upshot so you have to place yourself someplace ahead and try to time it so that you don't get trampled and you don't get you know you don't um uh get in other people's way for too long so it's it's an interesting challenge and walking backwards <laughs> and walking backwards and not tripping is really <laughs> a challenge too <laughs> yeah so that's it great yeah. All right, Martin, you're up. And Martin asked that I, does that help Martin? Um, just show the left side first. Okay. And um, the color shifts between the two, but uh, so this, this photo was taken. So this is uh, Marrakesh, Morocco wool market. It's uh, 1978 and um, for the show that the club had I only had two photos that were framed already and I don't that's all I had time well I had a few but only two that I really liked and this was one of them and it was uh, taken early in my photographic career um, I had gotten my first single lens reflex camera and multiple lenses as a graduation present from dental school in 71 and um, I started getting considerable experience in street photography in um, New York City, where I'm from, and then San Francisco, and then New Orleans, and Florida, and Puerto Rico. I started taking my camera everywhere. And um, when I had been at NYU teaching at NYU, faculty were allowed to take courses for free. So I took, I go downtown and take courses in photography, street photography. And then when I got to University of the Pacific, I became close friends with the people in the photography department. And then there were some other photographers around and uh, they inspired me. And then I started using my photos that I was taking. I'd um, use them as title slides in my lectures. And so that was getting to be a lot of fun sharing that. And um, in 78, I traveled to Spain and Morocco with one of my pals who was also a photographer and a dentist too. And we carried two Minolters, SRT 101s. And um, one had Ectochrome 160 in it. The other one had Kodachrome 64. We also had some rolls of Aquachrome. Every one of those Aquachrome slides shifted over the years. The Kodachrome 64 has stayed, be stayed beautiful beautifully. This um, was printed in, um, in the uh, early 80s. It was Sebachrome. And uh, street photography in um, Spain was not too difficult as my friend and I both spoke a little Spanish, but Morocco was a whole different story. And um, a little uh, after Tetuan and Fez, we finally arrived in Marrakesh. And um, by then I was not as intimidated. And um, I became more comfortable with street photography, especially in those narrow streets in the Shooks. And um, 
luckily when we were in the Shuk in Marrakesh, I had the camera with Ektachrome on it, in it. And um, folks there were not always receptive to being photographed. So you had to be quick and ready. And because um, he often got only one opportunity. And um, luckily I had the right lens on the camera. I can't remember the setting, but as I was in the Shook, I had taken some photos and I had the setting the where I wanted it and stuck the lens in the opening and um, quickly composed the photograph. And that's how I got that. And it was turned out to be a very positive experience because I got a travel award at the Marin County Affair for it and uh, honorable mention. So that felt really good. And, and the next photograph, um, this is Miami Beach. It was a hotel stairwell. Uh, my wife, Naomi, is often my spotter when we're, you know, she, as we know, when we travel with spouses or significant others, they have to have a lot of patience. But she often <laughs> spots stuff. Uh, this one I caught in my own. Uh, Miami is uh, a street photographer's paradise. Um, it's got great lighting, architecture, colors, people, and um, interiors. And I was attracted uh, to the, you know, as my photography increased, I was getting attracted more and more to architectural details and lighting and colors and lines. And from the street, the lobby looked really intriguing. Um, I liked the furniture in it. They had period furniture in it that was upholstered really beautifully. And um, it was well lit and inviting. And uh, in we walked. And then I had no one bothering me. I had plenty of time to compose the photograph and, and take it. This was with, uh, I was into digital photography by this time. This was with, I think, a, a Nikon uh, Coolpix. Uh, or a P5100, but settings and stuff, I can't tell you. Um, the only uh, manipulation I did to the photo was where the, in one of the down areas in the lower left corner, uh, the turquoise area was a sign that said um, restrooms and vending, you know, and had an arrow. I took that out. That's the only manipulation I did because I, I thought it detracted from the composition. And that's it. Thanks. Great. Oh, and by the way, I'm really enjoying this club. It's uh, meant a lot to me seeing and I've learned so much. And I appreciate the comments. Thank you. All right, Miss Raven, our, uh, our cover model. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, what can I say? <laughs> so um, I'm a lot more like George when it comes to photography. I'm more of an opportunist. The interesting thing is, so are ravens. So mm. we have, let's say, like a symbiotic relationship. So I spend, well, I'm going to say I have spent in the past lots of time at Ocean Beach in San Francisco. And there's like literally like just an explosion of ravens there. In fact, ravens in San Francisco have totally expanded their territories and have taken over neighborhoods where it used to be just crows, but the na the ravens have like <laughs> booted them out. <laughs> huh. But anyway, so this particular photo originally was in color and it was daytime, probably like early afternoon. I don't specifically remember the exact settings. It was probably like, ISO 100 and I a lot of times would feed them like peanuts and stuff they're very engaging and I've worked on them in wildlife rehabilitation so I just love their expressions they're definitely probably at least my perspective the most intelligent of all birds just the way they look at you it's very different than from like way, the way a, a sparrow would look at you um, so I took the photo and later on, um, and I took it with a Nikon D7000 
And later on, I thought, I think this is like a really good portrait. So I did manipulate it to monochrome. And then I blackened out the background. Um, and she just really spoke to me. And so interestingly, <clears throat> at the show, my family showed up the last day. And my cousin, Tony, just loved the photo. And she ended up buying it. So I'm really grateful. Um, so it's now hanging in their house in the hills in El Cerrito. And so that's kind of it. I mean, it's like, I really love them and photographing them is just a lot of fun. So it's like a mutual opportunity. <laughs> They're opportunistic and I'm opportunistic. So it kind of works well. So you just have to allow them to feel comfortable. And sometimes, obviously, giving a bird seeds or peanuts and ravens love peanuts. So it kind of uh, goes hand in hand. So that's kind of everything about that. It's just, uh, it was just a good opportunity. Now, my next photo, I have to say was, <clears throat> it was kind of a little more planned. Um, this was taken the summer, actually, May of 2021. I was working in Seward, Alaska. And it was May, it was during that full pink flower moon. So I intentionally, I took my camera to work. So I got off work like 11 at night. And I just had this vision <clears throat> that I wanted to get a shot of the moon literally rising atop the Chugach mountain range. So when I left work and I saw it starting to come up, I go, oh my God. And I just like ran to this one area and I just kept walking along the waterfront. It wasn't totally dark out. The sky was still kind of like a late blue hour because it stays light there. By May, it doesn't get really any kind of darkness till like just past midnight. Um, and so I just started shooting. Um, so I had my ISO bumped up probably to about 6,400. And I don't remember the exact set, uh, shutter speed it was probably like maybe one fiftieth of a second but anyway i just kept shooting and i just kept seeing the way it was just laying on top of the mountains and um, i spent about two hours and i just kept watching it you know eventually of course it came up completely but um so that was sort of a planned event and it was just you know i just was really excited about it so that's the story of that one. <laughs> Fabulous shot. I like that a lot. Thank you. Thank I you. I had it that was cut out textile in front of it. What's that? When I first saw it, saw the photo, I thought the, the mountains were cut out textile or paper that was printed and cut out in front of the moon. No, it's just. I didn't realize it was real. Yeah, it's real. So in Seward, so out of Anchorage, so to the east, you have the Chugach Mountains, which is also a national forest. So Seward lies on Resurrection Bay. So on the east side of the bay, you have the Chugach Mountains, and on the west side are the Kenai Mountains. So this was actually across the bay. So those are real mountains. Yes. I think they're both great. I love the bird one. Yeah, I mean, ravens are amazing. I've gotten some, I mean, they're always, they're actually very entertaining. Um, well, but, but I've got gotten some funny shots of them too. But this but one is just like, you it caught like it. You caught, <laughs> you, you, it was, yeah, I mean, you just, you just, you made me see it a different way, the bird itself. Yeah. And I, I just love this one. It's just, it's yeah, almost it's funny. Just, yeah, they have just so much expression and personality. They are corvids, which is the family of ravens, crows, magpies, jays, nutcrackers. They have very large brains. Some of the extensive studies that have been done on them have determined that they're about sometimes at the level of like a five or six year old. They mm -hmm. can use tools, they can solve problems. So there's a lot of intelligence in their eyes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I love all birds, but and to be quite honest, ravens are smarter than like bald eagles. Mm -hmm. I've oh, yeah. worked with both because I worked at a rescue center rehab in Sitka, Alaska for a couple of years. And we had both, we had an injured raven and we had eagles. And 
Eagles in their first year have a pretty high mortality rate. It's like 50 percent. But they're kind of they're kind of a doofus compared to Ravens. And if anybody's ever interested, there's this amazing video on YouTube from about, I don't know, it's probably about 15 years ago. It was in Southeast Alaska. There's an eagle on a beach with a salmon and this raven goes up to it and repeatedly pulls its tail. And you know, <laughs> the eagle's getting annoyed, but the raven keeps going up persistent, persistent. And finally, probably after about 10 minutes, the eagle was so frustrated, it took off, left the fish, the raven got the fish. <laughs> so they definitely will outsmart them. So they're pretty incredible. <laughs> and they're very collaborative with each other. They totally are. It's just like you wonder sometimes, now what conversation is going on here? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. okay, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Sandy, your turn. <laughs> Hi. Um, sorry, I, I had to leave because somebody was knocking at the door and I wasn't expecting anybody. Got, I got a little scared. Um, but um, I think it's okay now. Um, anyway, I'm realizing that I don't have any moving targets in, in the two that I chose for the show. Um, and I, as everybody else was presenting, I was thinking about how I got my first camera when I was in 1969 um, in order to uh, take photographs when I went to um, graduate school in East Africa. And <clears throat> I had it was a Canon SLR and um, uh, 35 millimeter. And um, so I started practicing uh, with it. And um, uh, my good friend was giving me lessons and he was a photographer and he put me in touch with, he worked at a publishing company and he put me in touch with a publisher who uh, hired me to, I sold the first photograph that I ever took. Um, and then when I was then when I was in East Africa, I had I had applied for a job at Children's TV Workshop that makes uh, Sesame Street, and they um, uh, offered me a job as a producer. But I was going to Africa, so I had to make a a choice. So I had this sort of assignment to uh, do a photo. Um, uh, um series on mothers and children and um i was very serious about it when i was in uh kenya uganda and tanzania and in this one uh place where i almost got killed taking uh a picture of a mother and child i di i didn't speak um kikuyu that this particular mother it was in uh what's called the largest slum in the world, uh, Kibera. Um, it wasn't that large then. It was just a place where people squatted. And um, uh, I was the father of the child appeared out of nowhere with the machete, this, this big coming at me to stop taking the picture because he assumed that I was from the city council and there to take pictures of people that should be thrown out. Um, and I was literally frozen, paralyzed with fear. And I couldn't move. Somebody had to grab me by the elbow and, and move me out of there. So I was thinking tonight as other people were presenting that, that the two that I chose for the show are the stillest, safest photographs that I could mm. possibly have taken. And um, and both of them are um, uh, painterly. Mm -hmm. um, and um, this one was, I took this in 2017 in Southern California and it's just a succulent and um, that I call uh, Fibonacci because it's an example of how nature repeats numbers. Um, and I took it with a, a, a cell phone. Um, and 
I had never used um, uh, Lightroom. I'm just learning Lightroom. And um, Stephanie helped me uh, clean this up. And I had a real resistance to um, taking away some of the brown spots on this because um, I wanted to let the viewer know that this was real, that it wasn't a painting. Um, and so, but I didn't, we took everything away and it is like a painting. Mm -hmm. um, and actually this one, uh, someone has bought, uh, saw it at the, at the show and has uh, bought it. It hasn't changed hands yet, but she just told me recently that she still intends to do it. Um, and um, so we can go on to the next one. So this one has a little bit more movement in it, but it also is painterly. And uh, it's Richardson Cove in Mill Valley, where I go a lot. Um, and um, it, I, I took it uh, about a year ago. Um, and I'm not sure it probably was during the, uh, the fires when we got such fantastic um, sunsets. But I had taken the picture. So I caught Stephanie and some other people at the show turning this around. Oh, it's <laughs> upside down. And, um, and what happened was that, and this is the way I intended it. And what happened was that um, I was showing some of my photographs to Valvi Appleton, or he saw it. I had posted it on Facebook and he saw it. And he said, um, what if you turn it upside down? Yeah. And I liked it when it was turned upside down. It made it not realistic and, um, and something to think about something not just um, a still life, really. I made it, made it into more of a still life. Um, so that's the story of, of these two photographs. And I just wanna say that, that when I take photo, that I consider myself a real beginner, even though I started a long time ago. And, um, uh, and these these two are cell phone, both cell phone photographs. Um, but I also take portraits a lot, and um, especially when I travel. And I have some, I have some thirty five millimeter slides that I need to work on, that are wonderful photograph uh, uh, portraits that I took when I was in China, that are going to be fun to work with in in Lightroom. Um, but so this was, this was my first, uh, showing of any photographs and the first time I framed any of my photographs. So it was very exciting for me. Sandy, can I, can I say the upside down effect? Uh, I like it a lot and that's quite a discovery, but that's also a technique uh, sometimes they have for evaluating a composition yes. by turning the photograph upside down. If it looks the same or better, or you know, usually you know, it's it's uncanny. Here you go again, Stephanie. <laughs> uh, it's uh, if it holds up both ways, it, it shows it's a good composition. You know. Yeah, I know that Stephanie likes it on its side. <laughs> oh, no, I just. It, that's kind of cool. No, you told me, me that. that really and I, I don't remember much. <laughs> very, uh, yeah. very stressful weekend. <laughs> Fun. But uh, yeah, I think that I prefer it this way. What do yeah. you think? Yeah. I love. I like it that way. Yeah. The, yeah. There's only one thing. If you got the hor the um, horizon a little bit more straight, I think I'd like it even better because it's straight. It's tilted just. Very slightly, just enough that I can notice. Yeah, I, you're uh, right. But and, you know, that's easy to fix. You know, next time you're in Photoshop, just, you know, but it, maybe you like it this way. I don't know. But, no, uh, I, I don't. I notice yeah. that uh, that happens a lot in my photographs. Yeah. 
So yeah, the horizon it, is off. I always have to correct my horizons, so, and it's just. Well, I don't know. I don't know how to do that yet. Yeah, yeah, you'll you'll, you'll find out. Yeah, but can I, see, I can, can great you see photograph. What I'm doing. Can you see my Photoshop right now? Or no? No. No. Do you want me to save it so you can see it, Sandy? Yeah. Quick and dirty. I didn't do a perfect job. There you go. Oh, you went too far. Did I go too far? Okay, sorry. <laughs> you get the idea. Too skinny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's too skinny. Sorry. Yeah, it's really fussy sometimes, you know. It's better, but it's, yeah. Oh, that really changed. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Mm -hmm. I like it the other way better. Mm -mm. I like it wider, but it's still, the horizon is still on tilt a little bit. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Sometimes ocean shots, when you see a boat going uphill or downhill, it always gets me. No, so do, do you have a, a a pro book? Are you what do you what computer are you using? Me? Yeah. Um yeah, I'm using um a MacBook Pro, but I have Lightroom and Photoshop, but I don't I just don't know how to use them. I don't well, have do, Okay. Do you know? Well, I I I just use the um what what came with the uh, iPhoto thing uh -huh. and it's very easy to straighten out and crop a picture and and do the color on it well with my cell phone I it has a, a setting that's adjust but it doesn't I can't figure out how to make it work okay well if you want to come over I'll show you on the on my back of my MacBook okay so I'm glad to show you okay that would be great. It's very simple. It's really simple on there. Okay. Good. All right. It's a nice shot, though, either way. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of fabric, like a, a dress, like a, what do you call it, ombre effect on yeah. a dress or something. Uh -huh. All right. So this oh. is the emu. The baby. The baby emu. My friend called me up very excited. She ha she lives in Forest Knolls and she has a huge uh, bird farm. And she called me up and she said, I have baby emus. And I said, oh my God, what are you doing tomorrow morning? And she brought these two babies to my studio. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, they're precious. And um, there was two of them and they kind of would intertwine with each other. And, um, <laughs> I just love this particular shot. And the cute thing about them is to get them to get, you know, you can't really see the light in the eye as much as in some of the photos, but to get the, to get the baby to look in the right direction, we used a little necklace and they like shiny things. They like mm -hmm. um, shiny objects. So That's she we have this little star necklace and she just kept swinging it above my camera lens and, uh, it was an incredibly fun shoot. Um, I've had lots of fowl in my studio and always have lots of poop, but this time it, it was very easy to keep it clean and they were just so cute and little and now they're giant birds and <laughs> but they're there and they get the zoomies and they run in circles and they're really cute and friendly and outgoing. And uh, beautiful. Nice shot. Yeah, yeah, super cute. I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> I don't know what my uh, settings were. Probably knowing me, probably like in the studio, probably at like an F five, and um, I don't remember my 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 shutter was probably like two hundred. I don't know. I'm just guessing. And uh, I use a Nikon D eight hundred, which I love. And then this shot was taken at Angel Island. Love that shot. And oh. I met this woman of Rush, an ex Russian ballerina. She's from Russia and she was a hardcore ballerina and came to America when she was a teenager. And she's in her 40s now. And I just had this idea about doing this and she just was so excited. And this dress is like polyester, polyester crap. It's 
the ugliest dress you could ever see, but it's giant and it had like a parachute effect. So I had an assistant and she'd come and she'd floof it up and um, a little cheesy, but it was really fun. And <laughs> we, we, we took the first ferry out to Angel Island and we had a bunch of gear and we had to walk up a hill. It was, it was about a mile walk up a giant hill with a suitcase and my backpack. Um, worth, yeah, worth it. Worth it. It was a really fun day. And um, it was fun getting to know this Russian ballerina. I mean, where in a million years would I meet her other than doing a photo shoot? <laughs> Um, I think I shot this. I tend to shoot most of my stuff at 2.8. It's not really that, uh, the, the depth of field isn't that shallow. I'm actually going to look and see. It's what very it's lyri lyrical. You know, I can't see, I can't bring the screen any lower, so I can't look at what the exposure was. But, um, the depth. Thank you. And I used a one of uh, my lenses are all fixed prime lens lenses. And so I shot it with a 105, 105 mm -hmm. millimeter, my favorite lens. And I guess that's it. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, it's one really of those nice. uh, poetry in motion shots. Mm -hmm. I felt I thought it reminded me of a perfume ad kind of. Of a what? A perfume ad. You know, like the oh, lady hiding yep. down well, the way. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Our last speaker is Mr. Terry. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> so I do a lot of research before I go on a, a foreign trip. Um, and the two photos that I put up were both pretty well planned in advance on timing and stuff like that. The, uh, this was taken in Bruges. Um, Belgium, um, and I'm actually, my apartment is right there overlooking the canal, and so I went and I talked to the guy that ran the boats, and I said, what time do you stop running the boats, because I needed to have, you know, um, you know, the flat water to get my reflection, so I went to dinner, he told me they stopped running probably around seven o'clock, and um, I came back, I had my walk around camera with me and no tripod and it was perfect. And so I went back and I got my other camera, my Canon R5, got a tripod and came back. And then there's a whole bunch of people on this bridge taking this picture with iPhones. Mm -hmm. I was the only person with a camera, a regular camera. And of course, then everybody started looking at what I was getting and that got up to a whole bunch of uh, interest on technique and stuff like that. But it's very interesting that though this is a um, landscape photo, um, the one that I like has been cut and cropped down to a portrait model, um, which cuts off pretty much most of the left-hand side, which I think is a much better, uh, um, better photo. But, um, but anyway, it was, it, it was shot at, um, I think I've got the settings here. Um, F22, 30 seconds. Um, ISO is at 100. And um, I'm using a, um, a, 70, um, a 24 to 70 um, F28 uh, lens. Um, and um, I went to Belgium to do two things, to stay in that building, because I really liked it. It was very, very old. And to take this picture. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I love it. It's but that, that's that's a little bit of, I, interesting enough. Most of my foreign travel photos are street photography, which I enjoy much more. But I all, I like to get in some some specialized shots like this. As with the next one, if you bring that one up. So <laughs> years ago, I was in Paris and I took this picture from the top of a, one of those buses, and I swore that I would go back at some point five years later and take it again at street level and so we finally get over to this level it was a it was late in the afternoon early evening um Denise had her roll later you know she was tired so I bought her a hot chocolate and she sat there and watched me while I worked this scene 
um, there was a guy standing over to the right in, in this restaurant, making sure I wouldn't touch his glasses because he had just set that table. <laughs> and, um, you know, so, but I, I did move the chair. Uh, I happened to like the fork in, in the glass, um, mm -hmm. but it was just, it was just, you know, it was something different. The interesting thing about when you take photos of the Eiffel Tower, I always like to take something different because there are so many straight on photos of the Eiffel Tower. Um, mm -hmm. And so I've done zooms at night, I've done different things, um, you know, and this one here, what was special about it really was the table setup. And, um, and I took this one with my, um, my Sony a7 Mark IV, um, which is usually the camera I walk around with because it's lighter weight. Um, and um, uh, what was my settings on this one it was uh, f16 at 160. Um, ISO was 400 because I was not using a tripod. I wanted something you know quick and whatever. So it was uh, turned out to be a very good, very good um, shot, and I like it. So. But I do a lot of planning. I mean, I, I actually on this trip because of the difficulties with Denise and using the Metro, um, I had printed out index cards of all the places I wanted to photograph. So I could just hand them to a taxi driver and tell him to take me to this corner. <laughs> and, and, um, and I also had index cards for all the hotels to take us back to where we used to, so she could get back if she wanted to get back early. Um, but there was plenty of places I went where you can't use an Uber because they want to take you to an address and I wanted to go to a corner, <laughs> you know, so, uh, but it was pretty well planned out, but I did a lot of other, I did a bunch of, of uh, protest photography while I was there, a lot of other types of things and a lot of street photography. I'm still going through it, but then again, it takes me years to get through all my photography when exactly. I go on stuff like this. Oh yeah. That's it. Great. Hey. Yay. Yay, everybody. You know, there was something that uh, I thought about that I wanted to share with you all. Did you know with the iPhone 13, you can set your cell phone to take raw files? Yes. You knew that? Yes. Okay. I, I was so excited that I found that out. So <laughs> I don't know what that means. It means Bar they're larger files. They have lots of information in them. They're really yep. Yeah, you, know, you can change the white balance. I mean, that's the most important thing. True. Well, yay. yay. I, hope, I hope we have our field trip soon because I, I have to say I had so much fun when we were doing that. It's definitely a highlight for me. And um, I hope you're all going to come next month to watch Mary's presentation. Absolutely. Did, did you say we're going to do another field trip or no? Yeah. Point, point Reyes Station. Oh. When are okay. you guys going to do that? Uh, it's not planned yet, right? Oh, okay. Not quite yet. No, we'll, we'll announce. I'm not in California right now, so. Well, it'll, 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 it's going to be a few weeks. we got to watch the weather. Yeah. 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 We're, we're trying What's to that? space. Uh, we're trying to space the uh, events out a little bit wider, so not every month, but every maybe two or three months have an event. Yeah, put a walk or whatever. Yeah, so hopefully not morning. Okay. Uh -huh. well, <laughs> give, give everybody's input. Well, it's 8.39, guys, so we've been at it for an hour and a half. Wow. Um, Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Great meeting. Yeah. Stephanie, uh, I like your uh, scarf. Uh, oh, that's a, that's a live scarf. <laughs> this is the pushiest cat you will ever meet. Like, she literally grabs She's so pretty. She's very pretty, but she's very bossy. She's the kitty I'm texting for if you can see her. I don't know Betty, if you can see her. Betty or Bug? Uh, Betty. I had one. Betty. Just look like that. Misha. She's so pretty. Oh, She's goodness. a brat. This is a bratty cat. What's her name? Betty. Betty? <laughs> yes. And we have a sister. Let me see if I can find her sister. 
you want to say hi to everybody, Kashita? Here she is. She's right here. She just ruined my brand new sweater. Oh. I don't know what it is about this cat, but everything she touches is ruined every time. Oh, oh look at Donald's kitty. This is Sophie. Sophie wants down. Oh, he's so pretty. There you go. Bye, Sophie. Bye, Sophie. <laughs> Got to put her out. Or you get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to be in here. That's so dumb. Uh oh. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to head out. So good to see everybody. Bye. 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 Go up to see you this weekend. Thank you. Uh, Bye. Good night, everybody. Thank I'll you. see you on Saturday, Terry. Oh. Yep.